Howdy guys, this is Marco Hietla here. You're watching Chaos Sign. Hi there, you're watching Chaos Sign and this is Meet the Artist series. Uh, our guest today is Marco Hietala from many bands. Hi. <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> Quite yeah. a few, yeah. First things first, how are I'm, you? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? Well, I'm, I'm great right now, thank you. Okay, that's, uh, that's even better. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot going on. You're like doing festivals with Tarot right now. Mm -hmm. You have something coming up with Daria gigs. Yeah, we stuff. got a, like a co-headlining tour with both bands uh, coming up in September. Mm. There might be something also next year, but I don't remember that far. Mm. How about your solo project? How is it doing? Um, there's an album in the works. Basically, the music is all quite ready, unless we want to do some remastering about some things. I've been thinking about it. I always want the bass more louder. <laughs> 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 but, okay. Uh, yeah, I get my reasons. Um, but anyways, yeah, so... Yeah, and then there's a TV show coming up, and oh, yeah? at least here in Finland, all kinds of thingies. Mm. Oh yeah, and I got to do the traditional Christmas tour with Raskasta Joulu. Oh yeah, that too, yeah. of course. Uh, but your time management is fine, so you it, you're not feeling mm, so busy. So far, so far, I've managed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's fine that management, time management, mine or mm -hmm. anybody else's, but I've managed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're, you're doing music, you're having gigs, but uh, let's let's get to you as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. What's your best source of inspiration? God damn it. Yeah, I'm um, starting with the easy one. I just have a principle. Be open to anything, anytime. Oh. And I used to carry a notebook and a pen with me all the time. But these days I got my iPhone, of course. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. And I found that, for instance, airplanes are such a fucking boring tubes full of mere humans. So <laughs> there, mm. are, there, there is nice to kind of go into your own world and write a lot of, a lot of stuff. I, I, what I mean is that you know, I've written a lot of stuff on planes. Mm. Mm. So y you can mm. find inspiration in a place where you're bored, so it's basically mm. you just... Yeah, because then you start to kind of reflect about all the things you've seen and heard, and then mm. what you've experienced, you add a little bit of imagination and you go mm. quite far sometimes. Mm. But that's good, you can use all those you know, yeah. moments when you have nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, what is the first band you remember being a fan of? I think we started with our <laughs> distorted fuzzy rock with bands like Harry Gaines and from Finland and Status Quo from England and all that. But it was the Black Sabbath that sold me mm -hmm. when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. The Master of Reality album that was the gloomiest and doomiest stuff that I had, that kid hadn't ever heard. Mm -hmm. So I fell in love with that immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. How about now? What bands do you listen to? What are your favorites at the moment? At the moment, well, might be actually Catatonia. Well, it's not so far from Sabbath to hold on to a doomy and gloomy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I find their albums really interesting, and a lot of times both as a bandwise and mixing some electronic weird elements and mm. they play really fucking good mm. yeah i get it if you weren't a musician and artist what would you do if you had to do something totally different <clears throat> well i wanted to be an astronaut as a kid finland doesn't really have a space program i didn't <laughs> know i didn't know that when i was five six something like mm. that mm. but anyways yeah if you don't get close to the stars, you gotta build one out of yourself. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, a little bit smug there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm guilty. Uh, how much do you go to other bands' concerts? Very little. It has to be something that has some kind of a special interest for me. Mm. I mean, of course, when I get to festivals, I want to see some things. If they have 
such bands in roaster. Like for instance, being at the Tuska Festival this year, they had they had Opeth playing, and I was lucky that I finally got to see them live. I've oh. always missed them when they've been okay. in the same <laughs> festival, so now now I got to see them. Yeah, yeah, so. it's it's not like easy to see other bands you know, at the same festival, even yeah, because there was this uh, one year schedules. that I tried to go and see Black Sabbath for three times, mm. two festivals, one time on a tour, so that we have an off day, and every time it got fucked. Mm. I mean, uh, at one time, the, uh, these guys who transfer your luggage at the airports, they went on strike. So we got to the festival place like 11 hours too late. The same thing at Download, we got there way, way too late yeah. because of the traffic and the roads full of <laughs> wet, heavy metal maniacs of England. Yeah. And then then the last time was that we were doing shows in Canada. Mm. And we were driving to Vancouver because we had an off day and they were playing there. Mm. And there was even Rival Sons as a support. <laughs> Now there's a great rock band. Yeah. <laughs> and what happens is that I got fucking sick. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I we had a show next day so mm -hmm. I had to be responsible and stay and rest and mm -hmm. have my pills mm -hmm. and breathe steam and whatnot. Yeah. Sucks. It does. Um, you've done music for years and years and like solo stuff and band stuff. Uh, but do you have some idols or role models yourself? Like hmm. in what comes to music or what comes to life? Generally. Uh, generally. Idols. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm more of an iconoclast, kind of a rebel myself. Mm. But of course there are... There are people that I respect a lot because of their input. Mm. Like for guitar riff wise, I go back to Tony Iommi, the Sabbath again. Mm. Now mm. he's done some real classic work. Mm. Yeah. And bass playing wise, well, Giza Butler from the same group. Mm. He's always been like really strong and groovy at the same mm. time. And I really like that. Mm. Cliff Williams from ACDC. I mean, the guy knows that when you play straight eights, that's the best thing that the bass player can do. <laughs> yeah. And when it grooves that hard, yeah, mm. no questions asked. Mm. I get it. And, w well, maybe you are some kind of role model and idol yourself already. But what is the... I have to topple myself. ...the best thing about your own music? At the moment, it's pretty much... Because... I've done enough for, like... a for like people who want some certain elements there or they want this to be more commercial, have more chorus or more metal mm. or whatnot. I can do whatever I want basically these days. Mm. So there is all of those elements. Mm. Sometimes even AUR elements and all that, but always also tends to slip a little bit on the progressive side. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting because many, many artists say that the best thing about their music is that they can do whatever they want. Yes. Yeah, it it's is. interesting. It is. And it's a great bonus that there seems to be a good bunch of people that actually like yeah. things that I've written. So yeah, that's a big plus size. <laughs> it is. It is a huge plus size. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if nobody listens to what you do, who can you blame? Is yeah. the whole world wrong or did you do something mm. that wasn't so good? Mm. Yeah. When it comes to uh, touring and, uh, you know, uh, gig life, is there something you always do before the show? Do you have some routines? No, not really that much of a routine. I mean, I do a few, like, vocal exercises, which are also more like to... They help me psychologically. Yeah, yeah, the sound comes. Oh, yeah! yeah. Um, and, yeah, then oh. it kind of relaxes you. Mm. And also it helps a little bit to... Well, it's muscle work quite a lot, so it's good to stretch a bit. Mm. But n no other routines that much. I just try to have a, at least an hour before the show that I don't have any duties or anything. Mm. So mm. then I can just hang and yeah. talk some bullshit or... Get into mood. Yeah, or lie down on a couch or what, yeah. whatever. Yeah. How about after the show? After the show, well, I used to drink a lot. But mm. these days it's more like you you breathe and you enjoy the vibe that you got because mm. it's a hell of a boost of a brain chemistry. An area where I have some problems though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, you, they usually the shows make me happy. Mm. 
Uh, is there differences now, now that you do uh, Tarot and you've done Nightwish and you have your solo projects? Does the feeling of being live and doing shows, d- does it differ? Is there differences? Or do you always get the same feeling, you know, I try to. Stage? I try to use my senses of, like, understanding the vibe of the people and mm. then picking up where it's the best and and try to pull it a little bit more upward. Mm. And when you manage to build up that bubble where everybody's having a good time, whether on stage or not, mm. then that's the greatest thing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Basically, it's doing live is the best thing to do for me. Mm. I, I don't so much enjoy the studio work and all that, even though I do enjoy that too. Mm. Mm. But live shows, when it's the, it's the moment you're here and there, it's right here and now. And then you build up that vibe and Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. the it's the best ever in this in this business. Yeah, is is there differences between the vibe that the audience gives you between uh, you know differing what what band are you doing or what is it solo project or is it just is it, it is it the general vibe from the audience always similar? Um, depending on the where we are on the map, it mm. differs, of course. Mm. But I have a pretty good eye and sen- senses about the how the vibe is. I mean, I've done clubs and I've done con- like you know concert auditoriums where people sit down, and then like huge festival setups and all that. And and yeah, in all of those, like for instance, a lot of my friends they have, they've had trouble with the auditorium stuff. But I mm. I tend to look at the people and I tend to see that when there's definitely like. Yeah, <laughs> you can read the faces. When there's that going on, you know that they're there yeah. and they're digging it, and then yeah. then in then mm. it's then it's pretty simple. Yeah. So you get yeah. the energy even though you're doing like auditorium or something. Yeah. 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 You just again have to be like open for yeah. the for that situation. Yeah, and you have to be there like mentally yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because they I've, I've talk about stage presence. Yeah. In this case, I think it's just. To be present. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Generally, yeah. How do you like to spend time on tour? I guess there's quite a lot of waiting and stuff. So. Yeah, I do carry my Nintendo Switch and a shitload of books in my iPad, and yeah, those are my main mm. tour killing time things. Mm. What kind of mm. books do you read? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I mostly read sci-fi, mm. and I do have some favorites. Like for instance, almost the whole catalogue from Alastair Reynolds or Peter F. Hamilton. Uh, they're all great. Well, yeah, and some of them are exemplary in that genre. Mm, mm. Then occasional horror books, occasional fantasy books and all that. There's a newer guy writing, Christopher Buhlman, mm. who had a medieval horror story between two fires. I can recommend that hardly. It's different and it's great. Okay. And it's also touch. Oh, we got a book recommendation here. Yeah. Uh, do you watch movies? Yes, I do sometimes. But now there's been a problem with the movies because, well, we actually have a little daughter at home. Mm. So usually, when it's evening, you have a you have energy for maybe one episode of The Boys, for instance. We started watching the new new season. I love that stuff. Mm. They portray America so great. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Right yeah. now. You do a lot of festivals. You must have some kind of nice stories to tell, some festival memories. Hmm. Let me think. Yeah, this is not an easy one. No, no, it's not, because every time I hear that, do you remember something special? Then it's like... You have wind in your head going on, I and you, you remember nothing. I've realized that that's very common. Every artist mm-hmm. has the same problem with this question. Well, the series Fuck Up was, of course, doing the Rock in Park. Anyway, it's the big one in Germany. One of our stage guys wanted to have, like, he had built up a system where we had, like, these power, you know, what are they? They're not batteries, actually, but cleaners. And mm-hmm. the, then they also store some electricity in order if there comes up power out or whatnot. Mm. Well, but what happened was that these things fucked up three times and then the show was done. Ah. 
So we managed to play, what, four or five songs or something like that. That, and that was a serious bummer in that kind of a festival and situation. Okay. What do you do? You live on and you remember with regret. Okay. Especially the stage guy. He was, he was pretty, pretty down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have some uh, kind of, you know, when you've met some big artists or something like that? Mm. Many people have these kind of stories that they've met their own idol or something. Yeah, I mean, well, it would be already back in the day when I was about 19 and going to Oulunkylä pop and jazz. Like, uh, I don't know if it was a conservatory yet, but at least it was a some kind of a high school. Mm. I was going there. And I went there a day early to see Dio playing the Last in Line tour. Oh. And the show was absolutely great. And the next day I was then flying back to Kuopio. And what do you, what do you know? He walks in uh, to the airport with Timotea Mikkonen to do, oh. uh, do an interview. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, yeah. So, of course, uh, I went to speak a few words and... Mm -hmm. I ask for that one autograph that I've asked. Mm. I mean, I said I'm an I'm an iconoclast, so there was that one autograph mm -hmm. that I've asked in my <laughs> life, and that was then, because I had to, of course, had some proof yeah. to my mates, for instance, in tarot, that mm. guess who I bumped into at the airport. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you got the autograph. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. We're gonna finish with uh, your dreams and hopes for the future. What, what, when you look? That Is there still something you want to do? That's okay. okay. It's Again, I have to mention that little daughter. So I would really hope for the political populism mm. get more real, and for instance, religious old school conservatism. Well, yeah, sure, we believe in science when it gives me this handy cell phone. Mm. But then when when it's about the age of the earth or something, you can just pick, mm. yeah, pick <laughs> what fruits you want from that cake. Yeah. I mean, it's all for nothing if it's, it goes that way. Actually, it's all or nothing. Mm. And so, yeah, world could change. Hopefully Putin has that cancer. We hope. Do you have some uh, dreams what comes to music and making music? Mm, I've, I've managed to achieve quite a lot of things mm. with the help of few mates, for instance, in Nightwish and all that. Mm. So my dreams, they, they've actually come, pretty much come true. Mm. But of course, you cannot really expect to have a, such a serious mental breakdown that I... <laughs> had in the in between mm. so in the end if you reach your dreams it doesn't really help you to move forward mm. yeah so but i still have a that like that if i if i can stay healthy what the mm. voice holds and mm. fingers like to touch the bass and the guitars then i'll just keep on doing this mm. Mm. because i like i like rock and roll That's amazing, mm. amazing momentum that you have. Like you, you have everything, and you can just keep doing what you you want. And always want it. So yeah, yeah. so far, of course. Well, who knows? Future is open, and all kinds of mishaps and catastrophes, whether they're personal or worldwide, yeah. they can happen. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. But like I said, we're here and now. So. Mm. Better remember that and take as much out of mm, it as you can. Mm, definitely. What are your plans with Tarot? Are you going to keep on doing oh, man. shows? Um, we've had this talk a few times that when we got some time off mm. and everybody's called to themselves and agreed about this sober, um, it's by no means a prerequisite of mine. It's just that, well, if we have that day that we could go So, for instance, Janne's studio and check out what kind of demos we got leftovers. Mm. And if there's good parts, would we be inspired to write something mm. out of them? Then there might be some, okay. like album stuff or later on in the future. But, I mean, we're pretty laid back. Mm, so mm. It's, it's no pressure. Yeah, yeah. So, but you're open to yeah. maybe doing something. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And it's been fun doing these shows with the guys mm. again. So yeah, you had pretty not? nice audience, like in Tuska, for yeah, example. That was there was huge. tons of people. Yeah, yeah, must have it been was, nice. It was nice. I know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. You're That's welcome. all my questions. Thank you for asking me over. Yeah. We're going to see you out there in Tarot Geek in yeah. Judgment. In a, in a few few hours. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Thanks. Thank you.